Hey YouTube, my name is Sam and this is my very first voiceover for my channel The Sandbox Gamer Tech. So today I'll be showing you guys how to install any version of Linux on your computer using a virtual machine. So the software that I'll be using for the virtual machine base is the Oracle VM Virtual Box right here. So the first step would be to create a virtual machine. So we hit new we type in the name so since we'll be going with Ubuntu I just use that as a name and you can see it already selected Ubuntu as the default and we're gonna go with the 64 bit so we then hit next this is where we decide the memory size the memory size means the amount of RAM you'll be su supplying to the operating system on the virtual machine so we make it around 2 gigs okay and these are the three options where you will be asked to create a virtual hard disk so if you do not want to use a virtual hard disk maybe there could be a different option for you and the third one is like if you have an existing VDI or a virtual disk hard disk file you can just browse it from here and then use that as the hard drive or the virtual hard drive for your virtual machine but since I don't have any I will be going ahead and creating a new one so I create it and I select the VDI that is the virtual box disk image I haven't like tried the other of these options but we'll get back to you once I have a bit of the update on these options so going forward I will be right now using the VDI that is the virtual box disk image I hit next what dynamically allocated means like if you're don't know how much your storage size is gonna be in the next two days you think it could increase so you may pick the dynamically allocated so what it will do is it will allocate much more size or disk space from the location where you you will be creating the virtual disk or the VDI file but since I will be doing this for just a demo purpose like a demonstration purpose I will be using the fixed size so when I hit next from here I okay name to be changed it's Ubuntu All right now I will go to this option that will help me to select a location where I need to save my file so I will select this blank drive and that's it hit save I will give it a space of around 20 30 gigs approximately this is the size of the hard disk where the application or the operating system will be installed so I'm gonna hit create and this is gonna take a while because this is a huge size of so 32 gigabytes could be like seven to eight minutes as you can see and it's increasing whoa so I will get back to you once this is done right guys so the setup or the creation of the virtual box is complete now it's a setup time so right now we go to the settings option and we go to the basic everything is fine for the advanced if you want you can do the bi-directional which means you can copy to and from the virtual machine to and from to your PC if that makes sense <laughs> and description nothing no encryption system we have the base memory as 2 gigabytes we're gonna bring down the floppy as yes, we don't need it we need the optical disk to boot the disk for the virtual machine and chipset let it be the default EFI if you want that option but right now I do not want it so I will leave it unchecked processor I give it two processors out of the eight execution cap let it be 100% and I don't think this would be required so let's keep it unchecked acceleration let it be default and these two options let it be checked display video memory I give it 128 megs monitor count one scale factor let it be 100 we can enable 3d acceleration but if we do 2d it gives me invalid settings detected uh, I'm not sure so let's keep it unchecked remote display not required video capture not required storage so this is the main part where you will need to upload or browse your image for the Ubuntu or the operating system that you need to install onto the virtual machine so the controller IDE 
you select this one let's empty this is the CD ROM and we hit this button we choose a virtual optical disk file it will ask me to browse so I will simply select the Ubuntu here let's go with the one okay let's go with Ubuntu and we hit open so as you can see it has now taken or accepted the image to be valid and is it's like right here it's Ubuntu 14.04 dot two moving ahead to the audio let it be default network so if you need to use the internet connection on your virtual machine operating system simply make it a bridge adapter so what this does is it will bridge the connection of the virtual machine with the Realtek PCI that's my physical device or the physical network interface card as you can see right here the Realtek PCI GBE Gigabit Ethernet Family Controller. That's the one selected here. So, like I said, the virtual machine will bridge its own Ethernet adapter with my physical Ethernet adapter for this computer. We can ignore the rest. So, we have Internet Connection Advanced. We can ignore the advanced settings. Serial ports, you can enable that. USB you can select three because it will give some sort of error message we need to check that later on we're just doing the basic installation of any Linux on a virtual box so going with the USB 1.1 shared folders if you want you can just select the shared folders with this you will be able to share your files from your physical machine to your virtual machine user interface we don't mess with this so we just hit OK and we set up so now let's go ahead and install the application I'm sorry the operating system so we are waiting for it to start and there we go okay that's just to capture whatever is being done on the virtual machine the keyboard and the mouse will capture all the events and vice versa so let's wait for the Ubuntu to boot. And we're waiting. Okay, there it goes. So here we have the interface for the installation of the Ubuntu operating system. We can either try Ubuntu, that's like a live CD, you can just play around and see how it looks and feels. But right now we will be concentrating on the installation of Ubuntu, so let's go ahead with that. We don't have internet connection because I will need to manually set my information for the internet connection, so leaving that for now. Going ahead, we have at least 6.5 gigabytes of free space. Yes, we do have 32 gigabytes. And okay, select so previously, we hit continue. We can uh, going back, we can like uncheck this option for now. We can do that later on. Continue. So we have four options it's erase the whole disk. If you select this, the entire disk selected will be erased. If you're trying to install the operating system, the Ubuntu, on your physical hard drive, and if it's like an empty hard drive, you can surely go with this. But if you have Windows or any data or information that you need to save, do not use this option. This video is specifically is about the creation of the partition manually, so we will ignore these options. The first one, and we'll concentrate on the third. I'm sorry, the fourth one that is something else and we hit continue so here we can see the virtual disk was created as the ATA V box a virtual box hard disk and that's 35.2 gigs okay and so we create a new partition table and blah 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 we click on continue All right so we have 35 gigabytes of free space so we hit the add button so I'll give you the explanation of what a primary and a logical would be later on. So right now we just select primary. The first partition will be the boot partition which contains the basic information just to boot the operating system. So we give it some space. 
Melody of 300 megs. We hit that to be the primary and the beginning of the space, that's the beginning of the hard drive. The file system, like for Windows, is the NTF is a new technology file system for Ubuntu and Linux. We have a couple of them. So the newest version of the file system is the ext4. Mount point is where the information is going to be mounted. So this is a boot mount partition. So we select the mount point to be boot, and we hit OK. Similarly, going forward, we then create the rest of the partitions on the logical partition or the logical type disk same being the beginning of the space now this partition is going to be the swap so we select swap partition from we need to scroll down a bit and we give it uh, 4 gigs the explanation of why it is being given 4 gigabytes, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. So we have 4. Now what swap is? Swap is the temporary memory that the operating system will be utilizing in case it is going to hibernate itself. So whatever information is on the RAM will be transferred to the swap partition it's just like the ones that you being that are being used in windows i'm really not able to recall the name right now um, so it's just the swap memory to swap the information from the ram to the swap memory when you're putting your computer into the sleep the hibernation mode or if any information that needs to be transferred from the ram your processor and the RAM is getting clogged up with a lot of many information so it can temporarily save the information in the swap area just to quicken the process and yes I do remember the swap area or the swap partition in Windows is called the paging file or the page files so here we select 4 gigabytes because we need to select twice the memory or at least 1.5 times the memory of what the RAM has been allocated so going ahead we have the swap partition now the two partitions remaining are the boot where the operating system will be installed and all the applications further will be installed so we give it around 10 gigs that will be more than enough again being logical beginning of the space ext4 and the mount point will be root so root is called the installation folder of every application and the operating system and it's denoted by a forward slash we hit ok the remaining space can be allocated to the home folder going with 20 gigs logical beginning ext4 and home as the mount point now home is the area that can be used for your own personal use where you can save your files, your documents, music, videos and downloads and every other thing that is not being installed. It's just that you're creating or downloading it. So we have all four partitions. First one being the boot, which has boot information. Swap is the temporary RAM for your computer where it can transfer the information from the RAM if required and collect it from there back again when the RAM is free. Root is where the operating system and the installation of the applications take place and home is where like I said you can save your files, create your documents, music, videos and every other thing that you will be creating by your own or downloading by your own and not the installation of any of the applications. Going ahead, we just select the root and hit install. So it gives you the warning that all these four partitions will be created and the information on this area of the hard drive will be erased. So we that's we are cool with that and we hit continue. And since I'm in India, I select this option as my time zone. That's IST in a standard time. We select the keyboard US just to confirm you can just type in the semicolon or the colon and the dollar symbol yes the dollar symbol just to confirm we have the correct keyboard layout and we hit continue 
name would be Sam and be mindful if you change this to uppercase you will not be able to proceed further because that is not how Ubuntu was designed you will always need to have the username in lowercase you can go with any kind of password since I'm using this for the demonstration purpose I've typed in my username as my password though it will not warn you but it will always say that the password is short and needs to be of a specific length in a specific type so to make your password secure that's under the IT policies if you like read anywhere or if you're in an industry you try to create your password on the Windows or the Unix or the Linux operating system over the domain they will always prompt you to have a password that is at least of eight characters having one uppercase one lowercase at least one number and at least one special character so it could be an uppercase a a lowercase b the number one and any special character be the dollar the pound or the hash the at the rate the ampersand the and symbol star anything and minimum of eight characters so be mindful of that that is really very secure and really hard to break and login automatically I wouldn't prefer that because if I lock my system and walk around the room could somebody else could just walk in and get into my computer so I select require my password to log in we ignore the encryption to my home folder and we hit continue so the installation has begun will take a while to complete so I'll get back again once this is complete so just stay tuned alright guys so as you can see the installation has completed and now the virtual machine is asking us to restart the operating system now so before we do that let's go ahead and check the information on the settings tab because uh, what we need to do is we need to remove this installation media from here because if we keep that here it might boot it up again so either you could remove it from the storage media or you may go to systems and change the priority of the boot order so you can move the hard disk up but right now it's not possible because the operating system is still in the process of running on the virtual machine and while running you cannot make any changes so we hit cancel and we hit restart now so let's wait for it to go ahead and restart the virtual machine so we cut this off for now and we like power out the machine oops so we go to the settings option system and just scroll this option to the very end and we can uncheck the floppy because we don't need floppy okay and then we start the virtual machine and it's booting looks good alright guys so we are back to the virtual machine Ubuntu installation and as you can see we have the basic application listed here and the network is still trying to connect because I haven't provided any information on how to connect to the internet my IP address and DNS server and the gateway so this was the base these were the basic steps on how to install Linux using the custom partition where you can create partitions manually this is the most convenient method and the approved method and been like proven online that this is the correct way of installing so you can follow these instructions go ahead and install it today try it out and if there are any questions you have do let me know in the comments and i will get back to you as soon as possible so thank you for watching this video have a good day